In this video, we'll be playing around with a MIDI triggered gate plugin from Grind Love. This is a free plugin. You can get it through Repack or through his GitHub. I'll show you here. Here's his GitHub. You can go to the JSFX folder and download the plugin, but I would recommend going through Repack because it's much easier. You can find Geraint's JSFX repository here. You just click on that, and then back in Reaper, you manage the repositories here, uh, import a repository, and then paste that in. So this is an audio plugin that is basically waiting for a MIDI note to do its thing. So we've got two different modes on this, gate or mute. So while it's on gate, it's going to wait for a note. And when that note comes in, it's going to open the gate. It's going to let the sound through. Now in mute mode, it does the opposite. It waits for a note to shut off the audio. And we can make this velocity sensitive by adjusting the max velocity. If we have this on one, it's going to ignore any velocity. But if we have this on 127 or any number in between, the MIDI velocity that we put in here is actually going to um, affect the amount of attenuation that we hear. We can have this trigger on only certain channels or on all channels. And, and then we have basic attack and release controls. This adjusts uh, not the MIDI triggering, but actually the, the way that the audio is let through. So here's an example of what this is like. I've got a pad here. And so let's listen to the pad on its own. So it's this really big pad. It, you know, it's all swirly. There's lots of reverb and stuff. And that can get really cluttered. I also have just a simple bass line and a drum loop. Okay, now MIDI gate has its own track. It's being fed the audio from the pad track um, in a pre-fader situation. So here's what the routing looks like for this. I'm sending just audio, no MIDI to the MIDI gate plugin um, on its own track. And I'm using a pre-fader send so that this level here doesn't affect the send. Um, in addition to that, I want only the sound that's coming through the MIDI gate to be heard. So I'm going to alt click on the routing button, which is the same as turning off the master send. So this track, the pad track is not going to the master, it has to go through the MIDI gate track first. So now with those two tracks together, it sounds like this. So that's on mute mode right now. Um, but I actually wrote this to work in gate mode, so here's how that sounds. So only when there's a MIDI note does the plugin send audio through. And we can adjust the velocity here so that it's, uh, so you don't get those um, volume variations if you don't want that. So we'll just turn that down. And so it's not velocity sensitive. We can increase the attack and, and change the release time as well. If you have these just on zero milliseconds, you might get some clicks. So I would recommend just, if you want a quick gate, keep it on one millisecond for attack and release, and you won't get any pops. Uh, so that's the basic setup. And here it is with all the tracks. And one more time without the gate, but with the original pad sound.
So it's a totally different sound. Um, I like that pumping gated effect. You can, of course, do that sort of choppy volume stuttering uh, with volume automation. Um, I find this is a lot simpler. It's as easy as putting in MIDI notes here. So you can also use this for triggering effects and things like that. So lots of cool things you can do with this. You might be wondering, why don't you put the MIDI gate on the same track as the pad or the, the virtual instrument? That's because um, a lot of instruments will be triggered by all MIDI notes, even though you can set uh, the MIDI gate to only work on channel 16, um, you know, this plugin will only, will respond to any MIDI notes. So you're going to get doubled notes. The pattern for the gate will also affect the, the chords going to the synth. And I ran into this with several different virtual instruments. So um, it's easiest to just use some routing on and have that on its separate track. I have another example here, a glitch sequencer. This uh, it's kind of inspired by a video I saw by Mr. Bill. Uh, he does this in Ableton. Um, they have a lot of really interesting plugins where you can sequence different chains within um, one track. And so this is kind of the same way. I've been looking for a while for a way to trigger different effects chains through MIDI. And so this is what I've come up with. I've got five tracks here with different effects. I have the MIDI gate after the effect. Um, messing with the attack and release just to kind of, just to taste. Um, and I'm sending in a drum loop to the effects tracks, not the folder track, but the individual effects tracks. Um, and to do that really quickly, it's, it's actually really easy. You select the tracks you want to send to, and then it's command shift drag to make a send with the same settings to all those tracks. Uh, it would be control shift on Windows. But anyways, here's how that sounds. Um, I'm using MIDI notes on each of the tracks to open the gates. And you can, you know, the duration of the note makes a difference, um, you know, all the spacing, and you can make some interesting effects. So this is sort of a glitch sequencer. So I'll play that again with the original drums muted. Um, so you're just hearing the effects sequenced. And as I said, you can mess around with the timing, uh, the note duration, you know, make them longer or shorter. Um, but it's, it's really, once you have a note in here, it's really simple to just copy and paste it. Or if you have it selected, you can command click or command drag to sequence those. So that's just two examples of how you can use the MIDI gate plugin. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.